Huffman encoding. The Huffman encoding algorithm is going to construct an encoding try for a set of strings such that the strings are going to have codes of optimal length. So it's going to construct the encoding try for a set of strings such that we achieve optimal code length. So before we go into the algorithm itself, let us see what we mean by optimal code length and how we can achieve it. So let's see that using an example. So let's say the string I want to encode is abracadabra. Now given a set of characters and their binary sequences, how to construct the code is for every character we are going to write down its binary sequence. So every character in the string is going to spawn a few binary digits which is going to be its sequence. So A maybe has a sequence of 000, B maybe has a sequence of 001 and so on and together that is going to become our code. So how do we ensure optimal code length? Every character is going to create its binary sequence in the code. So a character which appears more times in the string, its code is going to appear more times in the final code. Let's say A has a binary sequence of 000. Now that 000 will appear in the final code as many times as the character A does. So that 000 is going to appear 5 times in the code of abracadabra. Now let's say the binary sequence of C is 10. Now how many times will that 10 appear in the final code? It's going to appear one time. Why? Because C appears only one time in the string. So at this point it is safe to say that if a character has higher frequency in the string, its binary sequence will also have the same higher frequency in the final code. Now we want to make our final code of minimum length. So what can we say about that? If we have certain binary sequences that's going to have a high frequency in the final code, we should want those binary sequences to be short. That is, let's take A. A appears five times in this string. So I would want my binary sequence of A to be short. Why? Because that's going to appear five times in my final code. So if I make that short, then I am achieving a much shorter code than I would if the binary sequence of A is long. So if we keep giving the shorter codes to those characters with higher frequency, we are ensuring that our final code is going to have a shorter length. So what is the main idea of Huffman encoding? Higher frequency characters should be assigned shorter binary sequences. Now with this in mind Let's go on to what the Huffman encoding algorithm does. 
So let's take the same example of abracadabra. Step 1 is to make character frequency pairs. So step 1 make character frequency pairs. So I'll start with A. A appears 5 times. B appears twice. C appears once. D appears once. And R appears twice. The next step is to sort these character frequency pairs with respect to the frequency in ascending order. Step 2 is sort with respect to frequency. So I have C1, D1, B2, R2 and A5. Now I could have put C1 or D1 as the first because they have the same frequencies but when such a conflict arises, I am going to arrange them in um, alphabetical order. That's why I have written B2 and R2 and finally A5. Now that we have sorted with respect to frequency, the third step is I am going to take the first two elements of my set and I am going to join them under a single parent. So I'm taking the first two elements of my set and joining them under a parent node. So I will have some node here which is the parent node. I have C1 and I have D1. The rest of my elements are going to stay the same. Now the parent node should be assigned a frequency. So what frequency is the parent node assigned? The parent node will be assigned the frequency equal to the sum of the frequency of its children. So the frequency of this node is going to be 1 plus 1 which equals 2. Now this is going to be my set of elements. The parent node does not have a character but it does have a frequency. So after this we are going to continue step 2 and step 3 again and again until we have consumed all our elements into a single unified tree. So from here what are we going to do? We are going to repeat step 2 and 3. until we get a single tree. As you can see we have gone from 5 elements to 4 elements. Like that we will go from 4 to 3 to 2 to only one element which is going to be our final tree. So let's see how this is going to work. So now this is our set of elements. We have to first sort with respect to frequency. Right now, this is already sorted, so I am not going to rewrite it. After that, we have to take the first two elements and join them under a parent node. So I am going to take these two elements and join them under a parent node. So I have a parent node here. My first element under the parent node is going to be this.
Now I need to set the frequency of the parent node which is going to be 2 plus 2. Note I am not taking this one or this one in consideration when I am calculating the frequency of the parent node. Why? Because I have already taken that into consideration when finding the 2 for this node. So now when I say 4, I mean the sum of its immediate children. So it is 2 plus 2 which gives me 4. Now we need to sort this in ascending order. And then repeat the steps accordingly. So in ascending order, the elements are Now I need to take the first two elements and join them under a single parent. Now we need to set the frequency of the parent node. The frequency of the parent node will be 2 plus 4. The next step is to arrange them in ascending order. So this is going to come to the left of this element. So that will look like this. Now finally these two elements I need to join under a single parent. So with that, we have finished building our encoding tri. The frequency of the parent will be 11. So now with this optimal encoding tri, let's try to encode our example which was abracadabra. So the code for A is going to be 0. So I'm going to write down the codes here. The code for B is 111. The code for C is 1100. The code for D is 1101. And the code for R is 10. So let's see how we are going to encode abracadabra. So A is going to be a 0, B is 1, 1, 1, R is 1, 0, A is 0, C is 1, 1, 0, 0, A is 0, D is 1, 1, 0, 1, A is 0, B is 1, 1, 1, R is 1, 0 and A is 0. So the length of this code is going to be 23 bits. If we consider each of these binary digits to be a bit. So this is going to be the optimal code length for the word abracadabra. As you can see, A which had the highest frequency has the shortest binary sequence. 
So intuitively, in this entire algorithm, in each step, we are going to take the characters which have the lowest frequency and push them further down in the tree. As you can see, C and D have been pushed for a few levels down the tree because it has been created as part of the tree as the siblings first. So the characters with less frequency are going to be pushed further and further down the tree as we construct it. So that is an intuitive idea of what Huffman encoding is achieving. So the character with the highest frequency has the shortest code length and so on. So with that we can get the optimal code length for the code generated from the encoding trial. So this is how the Huffman encoding algorithm works. So this is going to be the optimal code length for the word abracadabra. As you can see, A which had the highest frequency has the shortest binary sequence. So intuitively, in this entire algorithm, in each step, we are going to take the characters which have the lowest frequency and push them further down in the tree. As you can see, C and D have been pushed for a few levels down the tree because it has been created as part of the tree as the siblings first. So the characters with less frequency are going to be pushed further and further down the tree as we construct it. So that is an intuitive idea of what Huffman encoding is achieving. So the character with the highest frequency has the shortest code length and so on. So with that we can get the optimal code length for the code generated from the encoding trial. So this is how the Huffman encoding algorithm works.